Hello everyone, Sadden here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition Beta and Java Snapshot. We have a ton of new 1.20 features today, including new redstone, new structures, tons of new archaeology features, new armor trams and sniffer eggs, and a new plant. It's just a big beta and there's even more amazing features as well. So let's just hop into it. This is seriously a great one. We're going to start small, but this is possibly the best feature in the entire 1.20 update. So as you know, we got signs in the game right pretty pretty cool and of course if you ever mess up and there's a typo you can never ever fix it but now if you click on the sign finally we can edit signs in minecraft and this includes basically any sign in the game so look at that now we can completely change the meaning of any sign but wait there's more because now they're double-sided and you can have anything you want on one side including the different you know colors and different ink values you can make them glowing signs you can change everything about these and you can edit either side of them which is amazing now if you don't want them to be editable you just click on that with a piece of honeycomb and that'll actually wax the sign and now you cannot edit these anymore so you can still lock signs in place so of course all those features also apply to the hanging signs as well because of course they would mojang wouldn't do us like that so yeah hanging signs regular signs and when you go to place a new sign that's going to let you type on the front of it but then if you want to type on the back you actually have to physically walk around it and go type on the back of it so there you go now we can type some gibberish on all these things that's not a bad word is it and let's take a look at the actual 1.20 features so we have a brand new structure out of the game these are the trail ruins and basically these are just left over from an ancient civilization and they'll have a little bit of suspicious sand and uh, this little blob right here that's basically it it's basically just a cube of blob I'm a liar. There's basically a whole village down here, and there is a lot of stuff down here. Now, there isn't really that much to explore, but you should find a fair bit of suspicious sand or suspicious gravel here, and this is where you're going to be getting a lot of your different pottery shards. I'll talk more about that in a second. Now, there isn't really much to see down here. There's no real interior. There's no loot chests. There is like a random ladder here or there, so it seems like there's a fair chance of these things generating underwater, but I also found one that's completely completely above land and it actually generated like a bit of dirt underneath of it so that it wouldn't be over the water so that's kind of cool you can kind of treat these things like a village or an underwater village they're, they're kind of the same deal again this one doesn't have any loot chests or really anything to explore but you are going to be finding hopefully a lot of these suspicious blocks that you can then brush away this is actually a pretty good place to get your mud bricks and your terracottas and your glazed terracottas without having to find a mesa or a mangrove biome so that's kind of cool if you're in a cold ocean biome you can find the ocean ruins of course but these ones will now have the suspicious gravel that you can find and get you know all kinds of stuff from and in the warm ocean biomes you can now find these ocean ruins that have some sus sand in them they also added 16 new pottery shards for a total of 20 so now there are 20 different kinds of pot that you can create in the game and as you can see we got all the different names here we got the angler the archer arms up blade bruce burn danger explore friend heart heartbreak how minor mourner plenty a prize sheaf and shelter along with skull also this one is missing a space in the name so these are all the pots in order basically and as you can see now we got a bunch of good ones there's a warden there's a sniffer it's so adorable look at it and then we got a creeper over there arms up a tree i don't i don't know what that one's supposed to be and then a, just a bunch of other good stuff we also got a cute little doggo over here so now you can tell some actual stories in your minecraft world just using these potteries and and that's really cool environmental storytelling and of course you can have up to four different icons per pot so you can combine any of these icons that you want into this little shape and then you get yourself a custom pot in the game very good and of course you can find all these pottery shards at various different places in the world either desert wells desert temples cold ocean ruins warm ocean ruins or the trail ruins so quite a few places to find and i think these have all been distributed between those five different structures so you can't find all of these at a single structure you need to go to multiple different ones in order to get all of them skulk sensors have had two surprising updates in this beta as well so now we have the calibrated skulk sensor you cannot find these in the world you can only craft them so you need one skulk sensor in the middle and then three uh, amethyst shards above it like so and that'll give you 
this calibrated skulk sensor, which not only looks very cool, but it has some great functionality as well. Now, this side right here with a little bit of amethyst on it is the redstone input. So whatever signal strength of redstone you put into that is the only signal strength that the skulk sensor will listen to. So of course there's like a million different actions in the game and those are split up into 15 different categories of signal strength. So as you can see, a fishing bobber landing on the ground will no longer activate that skulk sensor, neither will placing or breaking blocks. But if we walk, that is then going to activate the skulk sensor because it's a signal strength of one and give us an output of one. So now you can very, very easily specify what actions you want the Skulk Sensor to listen to without needing to bury it in wool or have a more complicated redstone system around it. This was previously possible, but it took a little bit more redstone and a little bit more effort and it was just very bulky, but this is a very nice, elegant solution that solves the problem entirely and makes these things arguably a lot more useful. So you might be wondering why we craft this using an amethyst shard and why it's got like this spiky hairdo all of a sudden, but that is because of our secondary feature, which is vibration resonance. And this allows you to send a skulk sensor like signal down a line of skulk sensors and repeat that signal kind of like a repeater and it's honestly really really cool so we have this one set up to only detect a signal strength of one such as walking and then we have it set up to repeat that signal so we can send the signal strength of one all the way down the line without needing to make these ones the calibrated skulk sensor i already forgot the name so as you can see, if I step right here, all of these other ones are only going to send out a signal strength of one. And that is really, really impressive. I love this feature so much. This is going to make these things even more deadly. And I cannot wait for the entire world to blow up when you activate one of these instead of just part of the world. It's going to be so good. They're giving us way too much power. Oh, it's amazing. So if you want just the signal strength of one or whatever, you put a comparator, but if you want a variable signal strength, then you put in no comparator and it allows you to get varying outputs from it. Pretty interesting. We also have an update to the cherry tree blossoms. So these things will now have a new particle animation. And as you can see, it's quite nice. So they kind of blow in the wind a little bit and they kind of go diagonal instead of going straight down, which I actually really like. Not only does this look better, it also backs up the theory that there's always a slight eerie breeze in Minecraft because the banners are always slightly blowing in the wind. And so are the cherry blossoms. There's also been five new types of armor trim added to the game. And they're on a bedrock edition and on java edition but we're gonna check them out here on java in snapshot 23w12a just so i can show them off with all the rest of them so we have four new armor trims that you can find in the trails ruins and one that you're gonna be finding in the ancient city so this is the silence armor from the ancient city and then you got host shaper razor and wayfinder and they all look pretty fine the silence armor is a little bit you know over the top isn't it i mean it's just really Really in your face <laughs> but they all look pretty good this takes us up to 17 total versions of armor trim that we can get in the game now a couple of these have been renamed and like swapped around from the previous snapshots and betas but they're all basically still the same they're just renamed so with this rearranging of armor trams the dune armor now has a new pattern which is this one right here it looks pretty similar to the eye pattern from the stronghold but i guess it's just a little bit different the sniffers now have a complete feature set so and now you can find the sniffer eggs and the suspicious sand and the warm ocean ruins and once you find the sniffer egg it is just huge look at this thing it barely fits inside of the inventory slot right there it's just crazy and then when you place it down it is just huge as well look how big that is compare that to a turtle egg it's just like uh-huh and then the dragon egg it's it's the same size as the dragon egg basically it's maybe a little bit taller and like one pixel thinner but yeah same size as a dragon egg and uh, that's just a little bit ridiculous isn't it so you can plant these things on any block in the game but they prefer to be planted on moss they'll take 10 minutes to hatch on moss and 20 minutes on any other block so once you have two adult sniffers these guys will dig up the ground and find you some torch flower seeds and then you can use the torch flower seeds to then breed them and they will just drop an egg 
take randomly. They're not going to plant it down as a block. It's just going to be an item. There we go. So these guys just bred and they basically just throw an egg out and just kind of let it despawn there. So you got to be around to collect it. There's also been a new plant added to the game from the sniffer. So these guys will dig up the ground and get you some pitcher pods. And these things have a couple of different growth stages, as you can see here. And that's, that's basically all there is to it. So once you harvest these things, you'll get the pitcher plant itself. And this is a new two tall flower, which is kind of unique looking. It's just kind of crazy. I love it. So here's what they look like in mass. Now you can't bone meal these things to get more of them. The only way to get more of them, just like the torch flower, is to have the sniffer dig them up. So you're going to need a lot of sniffers digging up a lot of plants if you want these guys to actually get you a lot of flowers. So the pitcher plants actually have five different growth stages. Stage one, two, three, four, and five. And that's basically all there is to it. They're very detailed little plants, aren't they? There's also been another update to the sniffer. These guys will now occasionally drop a moss block whenever you kill them, which is like the most indirect way of ever getting moss ever. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But if you really need to speed up the growth of your sniffer eggs, you can kill one of your sniffers to get some moss and then plant the sniffer egg on that moss. Y you can literally grow a sniffer on the corpse of its parent. Hmm. Jeez, just drop one for the camera. Please, there we go. See, it does happen. It's it's pretty it's pretty rare, as it turns out. Looting would probably help. And that's what it looks like when the sniffer is actually hatched and you get yourself a baby sniffer. And then, of course, you can grow these guys up by feeding them a ton of torch flower seeds, which is not very economical. Whenever these sniffer eggs progress in the hatching animation, they will get more cracks on them and emit a little green particle and make a little cracking sound as well. And that's how you know that your sniffer egg is actually hatching. So what's your favorite 1.20 feature so far, either from today's betas and snapshots or just in general? There is so much stuff in this update, it is kind of crazy. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, then drop a like, maybe consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys down the comments and in the next one thank you so much for watching and then there was silence